Hello everyone. In this video, we will be taking a look at Type-C Jobber. This is the circuit diagram of a Type-C Jobber. Basically, Type-C Jobber is a combination of Type-A and Type-B Jobber together for it to operate in two quadrants. We'll be taking a look at the operation in detail, but on a high level, if you observe what are the major differences from previous circuits, this particular chopper has two switches, that is CH1, CH2 and two diodes comparatively. So we will be analyzing this operation of the circuit in four different cases. We'll break this circuit in four cases and it will be very easy for us to understand it. So what is the first case? That is when we are only going to turn on switch CH1 and CH2 will be off. In that case, what will happen? Let us always consider drawing equivalent circuits because it is very simple for us to analyze. So if you carefully observe, CH1 is shorted because its gate pulse is given to CH1. As a result, it is turned on. CH2 is turned off. And what happens is the supply voltage that is available over here will be starting from this point. So the current will flow through this point, through this path. It will flow through the chopper CH1 and then it will flow to this point. The inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus and then the current flows through this path and the current returns through this path. Isn't it? So in this case, you might be having a question as why D and FD, that is freewheeling diode and the diode D is open circuited. The first observation here is that positive is connected to the cathode of freewheeling diode. If you carefully observe, positive is connected to the cathode of freewheeling diode. As a result, it is acting as open circuit. But whereas you might be having a question as why the circuit, that is why the free, why the diode D is open circuited. So if you carefully observe, positive is connected to anode and positive is connected to the cathode as well. But the supply voltage will be more positive initially when you're turning on the switch. As a result, it is reverse biasing this particular diode and it acts as open circuit. So now the power flow, the major observation here is that the power flow will be from the source to the load. So the major observation here is V out and I out is positive, meaning to say whatever you are supplying will be appearing through this path and it will be available at this point. So V out and I out is positive. IOT is positive because the current is flowing from the source to the load in this direction. As a result, it is positive and it will be operating in first quadrant. I hope this point is clear. So case one is when switch is on, CH1 is on and CH2 is off. Only CH1 will be conducting and the inductor starts charging. As a result, we'll have VOT and IOT to be positive and it operates in first quadrant. Now what happens when switch CH1 is off and CH2 is also off? Let's draw the equivalent circuit again. So in this case CH1 is off, CH2 was off already so we are not going to turn it on, it's again off. And if you carefully observe, in this case what happens is that the inductor that was storing the energy plus and minus, it will immediately ensure that the there is no change in current. I mean, there is no sudden change in current, the direction of the flow of current. So it will reverse its polarity as minus and plus. So minus is now connected to the cathode of freewheeling diode. Minus is now connected to the cathode of freewheeling diode. As a result, it is forward biased and acts as short circuit. And the current will still be flowing through this direction, through this path, through this path, and this path. The current only will be circulating through this path. So in this case, what will be V out? V out will be equal to zero because V out is measured at these two points. Meaning to say it is a short circuit over here, isn't it? So V out will be equal to zero. So the major observation here is V out is zero and I out is positive because the current flow is still in this direction that is towards the load. That is according to our convention. As a result, it is still positive. Meaning to say it is still in first quadrant because V out is zero and I out is zero. I out is positive. So it's still in first quadrant. Now what happens when switch CH2 is on and CH1 is off? Again, let's draw the equivalent circuit. CH2 is on and CH1 is off. So in this case, what happens is that we had previously seen the energy flowing from the source to the load. In this case, what will happen is 
the back emf e that is generated during the process if we consider this as a motor load there will be a back emf that is generated that's why we are considering that as e so this will act as an energy source and it will start supplying power meaning to say the current flow will be through this path that is and the inductor starts charging with a polarity again plus and minus and consequently the current flow will be only through this path so the current flows through this path it flows through this path and it will return through this path so basically again if you measure the output voltage at this point this is a short circuit isn't it so v out will again be zero but the careful observation here is that i out is negative because it is going away from the load so the current is from the load as a result it is in the opposite direction compared to the convection isn't it so i out is negative meaning to say when v out is zero and i out is negative it is second quadrant isn't it now what happens when switch ch2 is off and ch1 is also off so again let's consider the circuit diagram so previously the inductor had charged with a polarity minus and plus now it will reverse its direction that is plus and minus because plus is connected to the anode of diode d over here plus is connected to anode of diode d it is forward biased and acts as short circuit and consequently the inductor does not allow sudden change in current isn't it so it will ensure that the current which was flowing in this direction over here previously it will still flow in the same direction and it will be flowing through this path and it will flow through this path it will flow through the source and it will get back to the load in this direction meaning to say the current is still negative that is the load is supplying the power to the source the current is flowing from the load to the source through diode d you might be having a question as positive is connected to the anode of diode d but positive is also connected to the cathode of diode d in that case how is the diode forward biased you need to understand one point that whenever anode is more positive than cathode in such scenarios diode will be acting as short circuit meaning to say the energy is supplied from the load to the source so the source voltage will be lesser to the lesser than the source load voltage that will be the assumption during the consideration of the diode d acting as forward biased now what is the major inference over here the voltage at this point at the load point you will be having a positive voltage because the back emf is having a polarity plus and minus in this direction as a result v out is positive whereas what is happening to i out i out is in the opposite direction as a result it is operating in the second quadrant i hope this point is clear so we have analysis for four different cases now now we will be correlating all these concepts together and we'll be drawing the waveform i've just considered a simple table of how we have analyzed the circuit so far what is the influence of output voltage and output current and what is the quadrant of operation now we will be drawing the waveforms and this table will be useful for us to understand how to draw the waveforms as well so now we are considering a dc voltage source vs and we are going to apply gate pulse for chopper 1 chopper 2 chopper 1 again at these instance meaning to say when i say i am triggering ch1 that means ch2 is default it's turned off and when i say ch2 is conducting meaning to say ch1 is by default turned off because if you are turning off turning on both ch1 and ch2 they will be shorted meaning to say shoot through fault occurs because they are connected in the same leg isn't it as a result it will create a short circuit in the overall system so we should never turn on ch1 and ch2 together in this particular circuit now what happens to the output voltage waveform so when ch1 was conducting the output voltage was positive meaning to say the power was flowing from the source to the load so it will follow the supply voltage waveform in this case and at this instant let us assume that the chopper 1 is turned off and chopper 2 is also turned off so at this instant what was happening ch1 is off the output voltage is going to zero isn't it till what point it is going to zero it's still zero when ch2 is also on so at this point we are actually turning on ch2 and it will still continue to be zero till the point when ch2 is also off let us assume this is the point where ch2 is off at this instant ch2 will go to positive again and it will follow the the nature of the source voltage waveform depending upon the back emf that is generated so now you will be having a waveform like this for v out 
now what is the output current waveform output current waveform initially what happened the inductor was charging through the chopper ch1 as a result the current through the load is increasing slowly because the inductor is slowly charging at up to this point now this is the point where ch1 is also going to be turned off isn't it so we saw that the inductor reversed its polarity and it was discharging through the free willing diode at this point isn't it so at this point what happens the inductor will be discharging through the resistor r through means of the free willing diode so at this point it's because of the free willing diode this is because of ch1 now at this point what is going to happen again the current is going to flow in the negative direction meaning to say the inductor is again charging in the reverse polarity because of ch2 because of ch2 it is charging in the reverse polarity in the negative direction because the current is now flowing from the load to the source now at this point what will happen we saw that the diode d was conducting when ch2 is off as a result the current will be discharging through the inductor the energy that is available in the inductor will be discharging through the resistor r the current is flowing from the load to the source and because of diode d the current is again discharging and it comes back to zero so now we know how to analyze the waveforms isn't it now what is the conclusion with respect to type c chopper type c chopper basically will operate in both first quadrant and second quadrant because the output voltage is always positive but the current can go in positive or negative direction isn't it so if you are considering a motor as a load and you are connecting a type c chopper you can operate that as a motor where the power will go from the source to the load or you can operate it as a generator where the current current will be flowing from the load to the source because of the back emf that is generated so basically it lacked as a motor in first quadrant and it lacked as generator so if you have one load and you want two different operations with a specific circuit you can use type c chopper which will avoid a lot of other aspects of design where you don't have to go with either type a or type b where in type c you will get both the requirements of motoring and generating mode i hope this point is clear i hope this video gave you a clear understanding in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching please do like it and share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates stay tuned thank you